Anecdote number 14. How a soprano predicted the fate of George Bizet. Bizet is 34 years old when he decides to use Prosper Merimé's novel Carmen as the literary source for a new opera. He is fascinated by the gypsy Carmen, who wraps all men around her finger. He secretly observes his wife, whom he takes as inspiration for Carmen. Genevieve is a sophisticated person, loves beautiful clothes and is later immortalized in a novel by Marcel Proust. And, she is the secret lover of Ali Miriam Delaborde, a friend of her husband. Delaborde is a dazzling personality. The illegitimate son of the famous piano virtuoso Charles Alcone is a gifted musician and painter. He is an athlete and womanizer. Like many artists, he also has quirks. He shares his bedroom with two monkeys. And when he flees to London during the Franco-Prussian War, he takes his 120 parrots with him. Bizet probably knows about his wife's relationship, but he is too busy with his Carmen, which will soon be performed in the Opera Comique in Paris. The troubles start with the preparations. When the soprano sees the libretto, she almost faints. She categorically refuses to play such a scandalous person. An alternative is found in the person of Celestine Gallimerier. She is a charming person. She has a lovely quirk. She likes to take stuffed animals to rehearsals. That sounds sweet. But as an artist she is hard as nails. Monsieur Bizet, I don't like the aria at my first appearance. May I ask you to change that? She drives Bizet mad. Thirteen times, he has to rewrite this scene, until the diva Gallimerie is finally satisfied. Meanwhile, the opera director stands no longer behind the work. Mérimée's Carmen? Is she not killed by a lover? And this milieu of thieves, gypsies, and tobacco smugglers? The text seems too wicked to him, he fears a fiasco. Last but not least, the choir is also dissatisfied. The choir singers are used to singing in a semicircle with a firm look at the conductor. At Bizet they are workers of the tobacco factory who smoke or gypsies who dance. The choir goes on strike. Bizet is at the end of his nerves. The day of the first performance comes. The audience is excited. The performance is sold out. The first act is warmly received. But the longer the work lasts, the more frosty the atmosphere becomes in the large hall of the opera comique. It is too much for the conservative audience. One critic writes about the leading actress. To see her, rocking her hips like a filly at her stud farm in Cordoba, what truth, but what scandal. The New York Times also writes a devastating critique. As a work of art, this opera is absolutely null and void. Only Tchaikovsky writes home. And how wonderful this opera material is. I am convinced that in 10 years Carmen will be the most popular opera in the world. And Bizet? He's down. He is heartbroken. To be successful in a time, you have to be either dead or a German. His heavy angina, which has plagued him for many years, has flared up again. I suffer like a dog. I have never had such pain before. It is terrible. Three months after the first performance, when he is a little better, he does a swimming competition on Sunday in the River Seine with his friend Ali Miriam Delaborde. That's too much for him. He has a severe relapse. Three days later another presentation of Carmen is performed. In the gypsy scene where the tarot cards are placed, Celeste and Gallimerie screams. Only by her greatest efforts she can finish the opera. She faints behind the stage. Galli Merrier, a passionate tarot card reader, has, without knowing of Bizet's condition, seen the fate of Bizet in the cards. The same night, George Bizet dies. Listen and hear about George Bizet. Carmen and much more in the online opera guide www.operainside.com. All about opera.